multi palette, that's what I need. Green, purple, yellow too, but people also do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, Whitney, I had to. Hello and welcome. My name is Eva, and I think that I am pretty big fan of Nabla and especially their cutie palettes and. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there are no new cutie palettes since actually the end of 2021 and because there are no new cutie palettes and in general no new palettes by Nabla, we will have to be satisfied with what we have and that's why today I'm going to play with two cutie palettes I have, Wildberry and Midnight. Of course, these are not the only cutie palettes I have. I understand that some of you might be very new on my channel, so just in case, I'm letting you know that I have all Nabla palettes and I even have ranking of all these Nabla palettes. You'll find it on my channel. I'll add it also here in annotations. Anyway, using these two palettes is a request from one of you. So today I'm going to do, well, let's say springish, springish makeup using these two palettes, but with uh, much more domination of Wildberry because I don't want to make this makeup really cool toned. I think that I'm going to uh, explain you some makeup techniques, maybe blending, we'll see. I honestly don't have much time today and my cuts are really annoying today, so I have no idea what I'll be able to do today with you because really I am hmm, in a pretty not very comfortable situation for recording. It's just one of these days when I know that this whole recording won't be without any issues, any problems, any... What happened down there? I need to go! This is the beauty of having, well, cut for sure, but I bet that dog owners also sometimes have these days when you have no idea what your beloved pet is doing and it's absolutely terrifying. It's like when your kid is quiet for more than five minutes and you know that you have a problem. <laughs> so I will see how much I will do with you today. I will try my best. For sure today's video is just another chill and chit chat video with of course learning and practicing makeup techniques. All right, I'm going to apply my P. Louise base, zoom you in and we can start. I'm taking my single matte beige to set my under brow area. I wonder if I should maybe cut today's um, eye makeup here, like what I did with tape, but this time without tape. I'm taking white berry and this really nice, um, a little bit strawberry shade. I'm going to use it in my outer corner. By the way, someday I need to do a video with uh, makeup products I barely use. This palette is unfortunately one of them. And honestly, I have no idea why, because this isn't a bad palette. It just, it's always not near my hand when I do my makeup, maybe that's the issue. I really have no idea. I don't catch vibes with it. I have no idea. It's a really good palette and I really love it. And always when I play with it, I always ask myself the same question. Why I don't use it? Okay, I'm tapping and with moves tap, scratch, tap, scratch, tap, scratch. I'm just spreading this shade around even to middle of my eyelid. Today I'm going to use shimmer that is a little bit like a topper, so good base underneath will be pretty good idea. I'm working on wet base. On wet base I really like tapping technique more than simple blending with circles. By the way, if you need explaining step by step tapping technique and blending with circles, I have a video with such techniques really explained in details. That was one of the video with uh, Nabla Read My Mind palette. I will leave this video, of course, also somewhere in annotations. I don't care about this area here because I think that I'm going to clean it later. 
just cut it with micellar water. So for now I'm just building pigmentation and blend this shade around. Now to smooth this area I'm going back to my matte beige and I'm blending only this edge near my brow. I really like to apply matte beige here and then when I'm blending color it's like this color is between two layers of matte beige and hence it really blends very flawlessly up to my brow. A little cloud of color, no harsh lines. Underbrow area is light, which is a really useful trick to do to always keep this very close area under your brow light, ideally in the more or less color of your skin and makeup this way looks much more professional, much more clean, clear, it's just very specific aesthetic. Now from the same palette I'm taking this shade, this is a latex matte formula, so it's something between matte, satin, maybe a little shimmer, but it's nothing alike, it's really specific formula and I know that not everyone likes this formula by Nabla, it's the formula that has to be more like massage into the eyelid than uh, tap or uh, blended. It depends on the day, but sometimes I really like to play with this formula and sometimes I absolutely don't. Sometimes working with this formula is pure pleasure, sometimes it's like, no. <laughs> so I'm applying it, as you can tell, in my inner corner and of course towards this strawberry red. I'm blending it above my crease too and I will blend it also with the strawberry red. So maybe you can tell already that this shade looks a little bit like wet. It's really specific, specific shade. It looks really well on eyelid I must say and even above crease, even on my hooded eyelids, even uh, in this area. So it looks Really, it looks pretty well, but it's very, very specific eyeshadow, very specific. I think that personally, although I have sometimes love-hate relationship with latex matte formula, I think that I like them, like in general, I think that they look pretty good. I think that for sure it's something that I haven't seen uh, on the market yet. I'm gently trying to tap and scratch on the strawberry side and now I'm going back to sh uh, shade, yes, to strawberry shade, of course, but to brush that I applied with strawberry shade. I'm not adding more, I'm just working with dirty brush and what it's left on it to just blend these two shades with each other. And I really barely touch my skin. I can always go back to the brush I used for this latex matte and do the same. So my sandwich technique, I call it sandwich technique, so basically layering eyeshadows. When you want to blend two eyeshadows with each other, layering. It works very, very well with matte shades. It works extremely well with shimmers, with shimmers, especially when you just only tap, not tap and scratch. And the sandwich technique, most of the time I do just with dirty brushes. I don't add any more eyeshadows. Now I can do the same uh, with this latex matte as I did with uh, the strawberry shade, so just matte beige and blend this area under my brow. Now I'm taking shade Alchemy, this is this let's say topper, but it's not really topper, but a little bit. It's shade that has base, but in the same time it's not as pigmented, let's say. Like this base isn't as much pigmented, I'll show you. Oh. This is how this shade looks like, so we can treat it more like a topper. And the base is a little bit similar to this color I have in my inner corner. That's why I rather to just first blend this whole area, apply this uh, gorgeous blending and then play with shade that is a little bit more topperish. And now I'm applying this shade all over my eyelid, of course, maybe not all over. 
I will stop somewhere near my outer corner. This makeup will have much bigger domination of this wild berry midnight I will apply on my lower eyelid, but I wanted to use this shimmer because this alchemy has some uh, blue particles, so almost like I would use <laughs> midnight on my upper eyelid too. I just wanted to show you how nicely blue looks with strawberry and burgund shades. Actually, burgund plus blue is one of my favorite combo. And again, I'm going back to brush I used for this strawberry red and gently tap the edge with the stopper. So, although I applied, as you can tell, this really nice shimmer still, all eyeshadows that are underneath are visible, so now you can see why I focused so much on blending these two shades together before applying the stopper. With normal, very pigmented, solid shimmer, this wouldn't be a problem, but with toppers, if you want to apply toppers instead of your regular shimmer, then you need to take care of uh, your base, everything that will be beneath this topper. And now I'm taking Midnight and the shade Alma. This is a blue topper, but a little bit different one. And I'm applying it in my inner corner, but still on upper eyelid. Usually toppers, although they have or they look like they have white base, they don't make area where you apply it more bright, lighter, just whiter, <laughs> like like here. Um, only this topper does that actually. Um, I have toppers from Suva, uh, KVD, other brands, even in Nabla there are some toppers that looks like white in the pan, but on eyelids you don't see this white. With this topper, however, it's a little bit different. As you can tell, it makes this area where I apply it more bright. Usually toppers don't do that. Of course, it's not like I'm hating this topper right now. I'm using this lightning effect on purpose. It's like a little bit berry blooming spring with a frosty winter. <laughs> Let's add some more frosty winter. So now I'm going to play only with midnight palette, but before that I need to cut this edge. I have to admit that I much more like to use just a tape than a micellar water cotton pad because micellar water can make your skin uh, dry. That's why after removing your makeup with micellar water you should wash your face because leaving micellar water on your face can cause really bad side effects to your skin. Your skin will just be more dry. It's not healthy for your skin, basically what I wanted to tell you. Um, that's why I much prefer just to apply for this short moment this tape and then remove it. But I'll show you how to do it just with cotton bud and micellar water. I folded this cotton bud in half. It's wet already. And now I'm looking for my perfect angle. I place the cotton bud and just drag, drag it down. The same I'm going to do on my other eye, trying to be, of course, as much symmetrical as possible. Let's see it. It is symmetrical, so now I can just make it even more even. You can also do it other way, and I know that some people love this technique very, very much. This technique is synthetic, very, um, very small detail, flat brush, and with such brush, they just wet brush with micellar water. They just clean this edge. So just choose your favorite technique. Cotton bud, tape, brush, what do you like more? The main minus of this technique is of course also that you have to reapply your base on your lower eyelid and in this area with tape. 
I wouldn't need to do that because my tape barely stick to my skin which means when I remove it still the base I applied before applying tape is there. Now we can play with QT Midnight and I'll start with the darkest shade, so this one. This is a really nice shade when we are talking about building pigmentation. This dark blue isn't as much pigmented. I'm going to apply it in my outer corner and a little bit in the middle, like towards my inner corner, but not much. So the biggest concentration will be just in the outer corner. As you can tell, one swipe of the color is barely there, which for someone, of course, it can be a really <laughs> waste of the time to build this whole pigmentation. But in my opinion, in this particular palette, we don't have actually a lot of mud blues. There's only one and the rest of them are shimmers with one exception. This shade right here is um, blue, pastel blue um, satin, but still it's not pure matte shade. So, in my opinion, such choice to make dark blue that can be built up up to navy blue, it's pretty smart idea. Not to mention that this blue isn't patchy. I will repeat myself, I always say it when I work with this palette, I rather to have blue that is purely pigmented and I need to build pigmentation, but it's not patchy and super extremely pigmented eyeshadow, but very much patchy. <laughs> no need to build pigmentation more. Now I wonder which one should I use, this one or this one? I really wish to use this one, although this one I think that would match here more, but it has a really dark base, but maybe I still risk it. So I'm taking this shade. It's really, really pretty shade. And the more I'm looking at it, the more I see that it's duochrome because it has uh, bluish um, sea green reflects, but at the same time, it looks a lot like purple from some perspective. These little, little particles are going to look great here. By the way, just in case, I cut this edge not because I was afraid to blend this shade with this dark blue. It's not like that. If you would blend this reddish burgundy strawberry shade with blue, you will achieve purple. So it's not impossible to blend these two shades together. And I really encourage you to do that. I have some makeup looks on my channel, some tutorials where I use this combination of a blue and burgund. I really, really love, love this combo or simple red and blue. It's beautiful and perfect and the fact that they blend with each other into gorgeous purple is even better. I just wanted to make such sharp makeup. And by the way, this makeup is really <laughs> a great makeup for hooded eyes. As you can tell, the accent is on a lower eyelid, which means even if you have hooded eyes, still this lower eyelid is visible. So you slay. <laughs> and this way I a little bit tricked everyone, even myself, because I said this makeup will be with domination of Wildberry palette, but because I have hooded eyes, then Midnight is much more visible and on the first plan. I am a trickster. <laughs> I am slightly afraid though that this upper eyelid is a little bit too light. That's why I'm going to apply this Cupid Zero. This is number two, dark brown or just brown. And I'm going to apply it with angled brush. So basically I'm just going to take a little bit on the brush and I'm going to draw very simple, very delicate line along my eyelashes. So nothing serious, also nothing complicated. Besides, I do it really, as you can tell, really close to my lashes. So this won't be even like eyeliner. I'm using also brown, so it's also not super intense. Try to be as close to my lashes as possible because I don't want any eyeliner. I just want to make this lash line more dense and this way this dark lower eyelid won't look so weird. 
I will do that and I will show you the difference between right and left eye. Okay, look at my right eye and then left. This eye looks much more... I wouldn't say open, that's not it, but this eye makes much more sense and lashes are more dense, like it looks like I have more lashes in my right eye than in my left eye. This is a little trick, you can use it to your daily makeup, this is a really nice trick to make your lashes look like um, <laughs> more dense and like there's a lot of these lashes there, especially if you don't wear, if you don't want to wear mascara, it's a really really nice trick, but with mascara it also works perfectly fine. You can use black of course, but brown, dark brown is super cool almost not noticeable and you really need to keep this eyeshadow or eyeliner or uh, pencil smudged and really close almost on your lashes almost on the lash line so where your lashes grow not above it like simple eyeliner but between your lashes and the effect is dreamlike. I'll apply beige pencil on my waterline just to not close my eye. This is also a little trick if you want to make this illusion that your eye is big and open, use beige pencil. White might be too harsh, beige is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to apply uh, my mascara, base of my face. I think that also I contour my face and I'll be back with blush and with highlighter and lipstick of course i'm going to apply a blush actually two blushes i will use this is palette by glam shop this and this this is creamy one this is powdery one so i will use two different blushes i'll start with creamy one i have all my face set it so i have to be a little bit careful to not move my base, all the, the same techniques I use for a uh, setted face are the same I would use if I wouldn't set my cheeks, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use technique uh, the same actually I use when I uh, blend my eyeshadows where I work on wet base. Here I don't work on wet base, but I work with wet product, so I'm going to just tap. And tapping is the best technique when you don't want to move your base, so when you work on already powdered, uh, setted face, and you want to use creamy product, although I have to admit that not all creamy products are great for it. Some creamy products, unfortunately, even when you tap them, can move your base, so it's not 100% it works, but most of the time, that's why I always, or most of the time, <laughs> I test creamy products on uh, set it and not set it face, so on uh, powder and just on wet foundation and here because I have set it face tapping is the only option so no tap and scratch no blending just tapping and this way you can blend everything flawlessly without any issue without moving your base remember also that with cream product even if you apply too much if you blend it well, you can really spread it all around and you won't have this uh, very pigmented patch of color. So don't be afraid if you apply too much and all the time when you apply too much, especially blush, you can comb it down with powder. Also highlighter, also really combs down blush and whole contouring. I really like to apply blush even up here, it just makes very lifted effect. And now the other blush, so this one and totally different brush, this one is not as dense, this is powder blush, but with powders I also like to tap, <laughs> than to just simply blend. I feel like with tapping I have much more control what I'm doing and at least when I apply shade then I tap and uh, later I can blend. So for example now I only apply it and now I can blend it. So the product is applied, it needs to be only spread. 
I would say that I apply a little bit too much blush, so it would be nice to comb it at least here. So I'm taking my brush I used for powder, I'm taking translucent powder and this is something like baking, so I applied a little bit more <laughs> of powder and I'm applying it where I need to comb down my blush and then just remove it and that's it the difference of course it doesn't work when you apply really huge amount of blush and it doesn't work well with cream blushes but with cream blushes most of the time we apply cream blushes I am the exception <laughs> we apply cream blushes on not set face so on a wet foundation so even when you apply too much cream blush you can always cover it with a foundation again so it's not such big problem and such big issue um, now highlighter of course I have an idea for something more yellowish. Although pink would be the best option, <laughs> I'm going to use this palette by Lethal Cosmetics and uh, this shade. By the way, some of these shades, I know that they are available as single shades, but they have different names than in this palette. I am not very much up to date with Lethal. This is not the brand of my first choice, let's say, so I don't know which shades are right now uh, available as singles and what names they have right now. But if you know, then just write down in comment section so maybe you help someone who is looking for such shade. I'm taking this this yellow shimmer. I'm going to use it as inner corner highlight. It has some greenish particles. I think it will be a really interesting choice for this burgundy strawberry blue makeup. And Suva toppers. I'm going to use obviously yellow topper as my highlighter. This is actually not like yellow yellow. It's something like yellowish gold. It's really nice. It really is very nice as topper, as highlighter. I very much like it. I was wondering if I should use maybe um, highlighter uh, <laughs> Be Perfect and Stacey Marie. There is one that has uh, mm, gold and blue particles, but because of that, if you know Calafiri, it looks a little bit more green, at least in my opinion, on the face, so i rather to use something that is more yellow. And of course, because it's a topper, it's visible only under some specific angle. A little bit like a fairy, but it's still carnival time, so I think I can. <laughs> I'm going to use maybe two Kiko lipsticks. I really like these Kiko lipsticks, I'm sorry. One is number one and the other number two. Both of them are from the newest collection. Let's start with the darker one, so number two. This lipstick by its own matches very well to today's makeup. Imagine now that I would add here blue topper on this lipstick. By the way, maybe not for spring, more for winter, but burgundy, but very dark burgundy lipstick a matte, it has to dry with blue topper, so stunning! I have to um, show you it one day, but I hope that this year I won't forget about showing you green lips. I have one, now I'm going to apply uh, number one on the middle, so ombre again. Uh, I have to show you uh, my makeup look I've done years ago. And I don't have it anymore on my Instagram, but when I had it, everybody loves it. Like, mm, people love it so much. Well, I have to admit, I loved it too. <laughs> we 
tell me what do you think of today's eye makeup? It really is really nice for hooded eyes. You slay with your lower eyelid with this sparkling shimmer. I really enjoyed going back to Wildberry palette, which I really, really use very, very rarely. And I think that from time to time I should do video that will be just chit chat video. Uh, using uh, stuff that I barely use. Unfortunately, I have some eyeshadows and especially eyeliners that I forget that I have. Uh, also blushes. Well, I am very, very guilty. So that's the idea, maybe, for a series, especially if you like just chit chat videos, because that would be for sure chit chat video. I would really like to do, uh, I think that this will just be a tradition on my channel. I really would like to do another spring video with, of course, discontinued Nabla Soul Blooming palette. I know it's discontinued, but it's a such good palette for spring. I can't imagine spring without it, although I have one really great palette also for spring. Glam Shop Pokusa. So maybe this time I'll do something with this. We'll see. Still, I have some things to test, by the way, that I bought in <laughs> November last year. <laughs> Let's not comment that. All right, that will be it in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I love you very, very much. And I see you soon. Bye.